Understanding binding is vital if you want to create any kind of serious VBA application. In this video, I'm going to show you what binding is, when you should be using each type, and the perfect code for managing binding in any situation. You can download the code I use in this video from the description below. If you like this video, then please click on the like button, and if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. So let's go ahead and get started. What is binding and why do we actually need it? When we use VBA, one of the big advantages we have is that we can use external libraries. And these libraries open up a world of functionality to VBA. And how we connect to those libraries is what we call binding. There are two types of binding and we're going to look at an example here so that you can understand exactly what they are. So this is an example of using early binding with the dictionary. So if you've ever used a dictionary before, you've probably already been using early binding. We declare our dictionary like this. But because the dictionary is not in VBA, when we compile, we get an error saying user defined type not defined. If we want to use the dictionary, then we have to add its library reference to our project. And we do this by doing tools reference, and then we find the one that we want. Now, in this case, it's Microsoft scripting runtime, and we click OK. And now when we do a debug compile, you'll see that we don't get an error. Now let's add an item to the dictionary. So we'll just add apple and we'll just add a number just so we see how the dictionary is used. When we click data again, you'll see the list of items, which is the IntelliSense, which shows us all the methods and the properties that are available. And it's a key point with early binding because this isn't available with late binding. So if we step to our code, you'll see our code works as we expected. And you'll see we got one in the immediate window. So this is simply early binding. And as I said before, if you've been using the dictionary, you've probably just used early binding by default. So let's now have a look at late binding and see exactly what it is. With late binding, we don't need a reference file, so we can uncheck that file here. And instead of using dictionary, what we use is object. And then at runtime, we set the object to what we want it to be. So we use create object, and then we use the name that we want. So we're saying the scripting library and we're saying dictionary is the object that we want from that library. Now, when we run the code, you'll see that it works in the same way as early binding. And you can see it wrote out one to the media window as we were expecting. What is the real difference between early and late binding? We know binding is used when we use an external library. And in simple terms, an external library is a dynamic link library or what we call a DLL file. This file contains functions which we can use. For example, with the dictionary, we have access to functions like add, remove, count, and so on. The DLL normally has a type library file that comes with it. And this file contains a virtual table. And this table is a list of the available functions for that library. When we add a reference to a library, VBA reads this V table. This is how the VBA IntelliSense knows the functions which are available for a particular library. When we use late binding, we don't use a reference file. This means that VBA doesn't know anything about the object and its functions until runtime. So what does this mean for us, the VBA user? Well, early binding has two big advantages, and that is the access to IntelliSense and the fact that errors are found by using debug compile. However, it's got one big drawback, and that is that different file versions can cause errors when we distribute the code to other users. To make our life easier, we have a simple rule we can follow when it comes to binding. We use early binding for writing the code, and then when we distribute it to other users, we switch over to late binding. So how do we actually do this within our own code? Now you might think that we can use a standard if statement to switch between the different types of binding, but actually this won't work for us as I'm about to show you. So if we declare a variable here as a Boolean, and then we set it to true so that we want to use early binding. And then what we do is we put in an if statement. If early binding is true, then let's use early. And otherwise, we're going to use late. Now, when we compile this code, you can see we get the error, duplicate declaration in current scope. And what this means is that we've declared data in two places. And so this code won't work. Now, a second problem we have is what about the case where we're declaring a function? And you can see we're declaring it as an object here, as in late binding, but also we need to have one for our early binding as well, where the dictionary is declared. 
So you can see we can put an if statement around the function like this. So how do we solve this issue? We solve this problem using a different type of if statement. So first of all, we'll delete our variables here because we're going to use a different type of variable and we use hash in front of the if statement. Now this means that we're going to use what's called a compiler parameter. So we said early binding to one and we're saying if early binding equals one, then do this. So we go to tools and then VBA project properties and you can see under conditional compilation arguments, we put in early binding equals one. The difference with this if statement is that only one section of code is compiled. So in other words, VBA will ignore the other section of code. So if we do a debug compile, we don't get an error. And the reason for this is that it's ignoring what's in the else section. Now, if we remove the reference, so we get rid of Microsoft scripting runtime, and then we do a debug compile, we'll get the error. You can see user defined type not defined, and that's as we expect. Now, if we go back to our project properties and we change early binding to zero, or if we remove it, then when we compile the code, what you see is that we don't get an error. And the reason is because early binding isn't one, it's zero, so it's ignoring the early binding code. While using the compiler parameter allows us to easily switch between early and late binding, it does lead to one big issue. Imagine that we have a very simple application like this. So in this application, we're passing the dictionary into procedures and we're returning it from functions. So you can see that we have dictionary used in many different places. Now, if we want to switch between early and late binding and we use the hash if statements, then our code will look something like this. So you see we have hash if everywhere, everywhere the dictionary is mentioned, and that includes the function or subheadings. So as you go through the code, you can see that it makes our code incredibly messy. And as our code expands and we use the word dictionary anywhere, then we have to add a hash if, hash else, and hash end if line. Now, one alternative that we can do is we could write two sets of code. So for example, we could have early binding code in one module, and then we'd have the exact same code in a second module, and we call this one late binding. The code is the same, except that we use object instead of dictionary. Now, this is very messy because it means we have to update two sets of code all the time, and it's very easy for them to get out of sync. The good news is we can create an elegant solution using a very simple class module. In this class module, what we're doing is we're declaring the dictionary, and then we're creating an instant of the dictionary using set, and then we have a property that will return the dictionary. Now, this is early binding, so let's add our late binding here. So you can see now we've got late binding and early binding side by side. So if we add our hash if statements here to separate them, now you can see that we've got our final class. And as I said, it just does three things. So we don't have to add hash if anywhere else we're using the dictionary. We just have it in this class and then we use the class in our code. So how do we use this class in our code? Well, instead of dictionary, we use the name of the class, which is CLS dictionary. So I've just replaced them all in this module. So we can now write the dictionary code anywhere by using data.myDictionary, which gives us back the dictionary. And then we simply use it as normal. You can see in this case, we have all the methods and all the functions that we expect in the dictionary. So I'm going to add apple here, and then I'm going to add a second fruit. We'll add pear, say, for example. Now let's use a second example. Imagine we want to print out all the items in a dictionary. We can say for each key in, and we do dot keys, and then again, we're going to use a with statement here, and we can say data my dictionary to give us back the dictionary. And then we simply use the dictionary as we normally would. We print the key and we print the item at that key. Let's run the code so we can see if our code works. So when we run the code, you'll see it printed out the keys and the contents of our dictionary, which is apple and pear. Now we're going to change it to late binding by setting the compiler argument to zero. So when we run the code now, it should use late binding. Now we're just going to change the values at Apple and Pear a little bit different, just so that we can see the difference between the two sets of output. So let's run this code and you'll see that it worked as well. Now just to double check that it worked, we're going to take out the reference and we're going to run the code again without the reference because it's using late binding and you can see it ran without any problems. So this is a really good solution because it means anytime you want to use a dictionary, you don't have to keep 
adding hash ifs everywhere. You can just use the class module. You can try this out for yourself by downloading the code from the link in the description below. Let me know in the comments how you deal with binding in your own code. See you in the next video.